Hi, welcome to my channel. Yeah, I'm actually starting a YouTube channel. And I'm actually going to post videos now because I technically had a YouTube channel. Anyway, so I decided to make this channel so that I could kind of give people like a guide of how high school is. I just graduated and now I'm starting my freshman year at, at college and you know, like, that's hard. Not necessarily hard, it's just difficult. <laughs> um, so yeah, today I'm going to give you rules on how to survive high school. Rule number one, respect yourself. And I mean, like, actually respect yourself. I mean, like, present yourself as a normal human being. Now, you don't even have to be normal. You just have to be a decent human being. Act like you know how to act. Act the way, not necessarily like your parents raised you, but act like you have sense. Like, be kind to people, be nice to people, and don't be kind of an a-hole to people, basically. That's, yeah, respect yourself. Um, mind your own business. That's rule number two. I realize that if you mind your own business, guess what? You don't get put into drama and you actually can focus on things that you need to be focusing on. Rule number three, learn how to say no. In high school, I feel like, I feel like in high school, a lot of high schoolers jump on the bandwagon of things that really don't need to, you don't need to jump on, especially if you're a freshman and sophomore. Now, some of you guys are like way mature and you guys probably won't actually do that, but a lot of kids like a lot like a lot of you guys will dye your hair because someone else dyed your hair or oh everybody's doing this so I'm gonna do it too and it, I guess it depends if it's a trend then I get it but just learn how to say no like if someone offer you drugs you're like hey you want to go do something super irresponsible and you know you probably really shouldn't do it then say no I mean now if you can get away with it and not get caught then hey I'm not going to say do it, but I'm also not going to say not do it because high school can get pretty boring. And if you were like me in high school, like I always took care of my grades first. I was so obsessed with being perfect and having like an, a very good academic record for college. Then you probably won't enjoy those things. So if you were like me and if I was giving my old self, my high school version of me advice, I'd say go do something stupid. Just don't get caught and go to jail and try not to do anything illegal. <laughs> um rule number four stay off your phone like it's a habit it's a really bad habit and I get it because I'm constantly on my phone too and like I constantly was on my phone in high school and that's why I'm telling you stay off your phone because you're gonna miss so much stuff that like literally you're gonna be like that we never talked about that you're just like yes we did because you were on your phone stay off your phone like also just stay off your phone only because like you're gonna need to learn how to focus in the world and I guess that that's I feel like personally that's practice for you that's practice of being responsible and staying focused and if you're being distracted by your phone then that's not really helping also you miss out on the materials that you need for the class especially if you're especially if you're in like math or English those are the two classes that you definitely in science those three classes you definitely should be staying off your phone I mean if it's biology I understand biology is pretty boring <laughs> but those are the three classes that you really need to stay off your phone because you need those three classes to survive every other classes all the other classes that you have reading like language arts you kind of need that so you can read in history and you can read in your elective classes if you have psychology or other classes you need to read math you really need because if you're going to be in a science class more than likely you guys might end up doing math unfortunately i don't know why but you're gonna have to do it and like yeah yeah just stay off your phone just get off your phone also too a lot of teachers really hate that you're on your phone and I know like there's a couple of teachers at my school that are like you are such a hypocrite but I'm giving you the advice that I wish that I would have taken and actually like used in high school um rule number four oh lied rule number five shut up that's rule number five literally shut up if you first of all if you're minding your own business you necessarily won't necessarily really need to shut up because guess what you're minding your own business, you're, you don't really necessarily need to talk. And like with that, I feel like a lot of people don't understand like, shut up when you're in class. Like if the teacher's talking, you know, like be quiet. Like you don't need to talk when the teacher's talking. I mean, like you wanna be that, if you wanna be that one kid that your teacher's like, oh God, here comes little Timmy. Like you don't wanna be that kid that the teacher's like, that has to warn your substitute teacher about. If you're that kid, then you really need to change because, like, that sucks and, like, you need to learn morals and respect for other people. Rule number six, stop complaining. Okay, I don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. Your teacher doesn't want to be there. 
nobody wants to be there. So how about you guys all make each other's problem a little bit easier and just stop complaining about it. It's the law. You have to be there. If you don't, your parents are going to get fined. If they don't, if your teacher doesn't come to work, then they don't get paid. So just stop complaining because nobody really wants to be there. Like, I get if you're in PE, you really don't want to run. I understand that. But other than that, still stop complaining because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Either way, you have to be there and you might as well just kind of stick through it and be fake happy because I wouldn't want to be at school if I were you either. So, yeah. Um... Rule number seven, get involved with it, with activities. I think that's the one thing that I regret was that I was in choir in high school and that was the only thing I did. Not the only thing I did, I did join like clubs, like just clubs throughout the school. Like I went to like poetry once because my friends were in poetry and I just wanted to see what it was about. And like I joined other clubs and it was fun, you know, like get involved with, get involved with things. Also like, I would say child for sports. That was something that I really wish I would have done. Like, I know that I'd probably suck at golfing, but I actually do like golfing. It's fun. And it's okay if you don't make it on the team, because guess what? If you're a freshman, you have three more years. Unfortunately, if you're a senior, you decide to do that, then unfortunately, I'm sorry. But I'm pre-warning you now. It's the beginning of summer. I mean, oh God, the end of summer. It's the beginning of your school year. I'm pretty sure you can try out for something. Maybe, hopefully, <laughs> I don't know, but yeah i would say get involved also if you get involved it kind of keeps you out of trouble so you necessarily don't need to say no that rule you don't have to use it because you'll be involved with something that is positive and it's good and it's going to help you in the future so those are just things that you should kind of do is get involved with something even if it's not something even big like just get involved with something or try to take up as much as your time as you can when you're in school also use that as an advantage because when you get out of high school a lot of things are not going to be there like you know of course they have football and like tennis and sports and cheerleading and dance in in college but as far as like for me i was in choir i was in magicals i was in show choir yeah i was in choir i was in new gen that was really fun and like it sucks because now that i'm out of college i asked my dance teacher and i was like hey is there any like you know like types of new gen classes and she was like in college and she was like no sorry go take a regular dance class for adults. There's not, you're gonna miss out on so many things that first of all, I understand that choir is not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper if you do it in high school and you know, like get your fun out of it and you know, have fun then, than it is when you get out of high school and you turn 18 and you have to go to college or you have to go in the real world. Like I know that a lot of like baseball teams, um, don't know a lot about baseball, but I know that they do have teams that you can like, form and you can compete against like other local regular teams too those are things like that that you can do but for choir i would say for show choir i would say like that's not something that is an option for me anymore and that was something that i actually really really loved and like i enjoyed all throughout high school so that's also something that you have to think about there's a lot of like things that you are gonna miss out if you don't try it in high school also you never know what if your freshman year, you know, you get forced, your mom forces you to play golf and then you end up being really good at it and then you get a scholarship after high school for it. Don't, sometimes you have to step out of your like comfort zone with sports and activities because it actually can be something good. I don't know, I think there's, I believe there is an actual like grant you can take, you can get for college if you played chess for all four years for some odd reason if you were in a chess club in high school. So there's all these small benefits of these activities that you might not, know that they're that they're there once you graduate so i mean i would just say do an activity if you don't want it even if it's banned actually my school had a really good band but like even if it's banned if you're playing the flute just stick with it for four years you never know you might be head flute <laughs> by your senior year like everything's beneficial if you join an activity it helps you in either way even if you have a problem in there it'll help you it'll help you gain some information. It'll help you form yourself. You can learn from every little mistake that you make and you can learn from every positive thing you do. Um, rule number eight, be responsible in high school. Like, okay, first of all, you had enough practice through middle school that you know that you have, some of you guys may have six, some of you guys may have seven classes. Mm -hmm. You know what you're supposed to do and you had practice then, so you should probably just kind of continue to do it in high school, but, like, I personally would check my grades every two weeks because, like, I, I was obsessed with my grades, even though, like, I didn't do as great as I wanted to in high school, but I was obsessed with my grades. If there was something that, it was, even if 
So some teachers, when you get into like your junior or senior year, they won't let you redo it. But check your grades because you never know before the quarter's over, you can actually go back and retake a test or go back and redo this sheet and bump up your grades. So that's why I say continue to check your grades every two weeks. Not mess, you don't even have to check it every two weeks, but you should never, you should check your grade at least every single month, in my opinion. Because I'm sometimes a psychopath when it comes down to my grades. Um, also too, being responsible comes with dealing with your problems. Learn how to deal with things the appropriate way because like if you don't, it's just gonna bite you in the butt later. Like just learn how to communicate. Learn how to communicate a lot. Also learn your body language. Like if you know that you have, you know, like a bee resting face, like I do most of the time, then learn how to change that. Maybe not, you don't have, maybe try to attempt to smile, you know, like, just learn your body language and learn how to talk to people. Learn also, when you respect yourself, you also have to respect other people. If you learn how to respect other people, then it will benefit you and you can be responsible. Like, learn how to communicate. Communication is the biggest thing you need in high school. You need to communicate with your partner. You need to communicate with your teacher. You need to communicate with your counselors. So your principal, learn how to communicate because if you do that, it'll make life a lot much easier especially if, had, especially if you had an attitude problem like I did which I definitely did in high school um yeah and being responsible you know is taking care of yourself if you taking care of yourself physically mentally like if you have a problem and if you're dealing with something like mental state like you're getting really depressed and school's getting really hard you know there's counselors and I know that they're not the best counselors at all but you know like Deal with it learn how to do things like that to benefit you and like counselors really aren't the best they're not but they're there for you and they're there for you just in case you can't talk to your parents or if there's certain things that you're dealing with that you need an adult perspective of your counselor is your best bet I know at my school I had two no I actually had three counselors that were the best counselors that someone could ever have now they might have not solved all of your problems but they could help you and give you the advice that you needed and um yeah and even that not even that i had the school nurse the school nurse at my school I'm not gonna give any names because i'm not sure if i'm allowed to but our school nurse she's awesome like she's a very powerful woman she she's gonna be on you all you have to do is talk to her and say hi and she'll can like she considers everybody her baby but once you acknowledge that she's there you're always gonna be hers like you if you ever need something if you ever need advice like sometimes your school nurse is who you got to go to especially at my school and that's not at every school but i know at like nhs like that's who i could go to also to like form relationships with respectful relationships and appropriate relationships with your teacher. Like, I know that I had a couple of teacher, my environmental teacher, I know I can go to her with any problem I've ever had. If I ever was dealing with something at home, she was like, you know what, no, you should do this. Or maybe you shouldn't say that. Your teacher sometimes, yes, they are your teacher. Yes, they are there to give you a grade and to teach you things, but your teachers can also help you with forming you, with forming yourself into a good adult when you get older. Teachers are the best things kind of sometimes not going to give them all the credit but they're really good they're really good like use and an example also too like you see teachers you know some teachers are pretty much open like how my environmental teacher was and she would tell you I did this wrong I did this wrong I did this wrong but you know what I have a good job I you know I respect you guys if you guys respect me you know like I'm a teacher I'm making money I can my mental state is good I have a house I'm on my own like I'm independent some teachers are really good examples because they can teach you things that other people can't and that sometimes your parents don't always teach you. So, you know, like, general of these rules, I hope you can follow these and take these rules with you and use them for something. I don't know. Even if you're not in school, hell, if you're in college or if you're not even in school and you're working, like, these are also still really good rules to follow because you're doing a job, you know? So I hope this helps you and bye.